So Noemi, I appreciate you spending some time with me in conversation. So again, this is part of my healing journey. And so, so many things have happened in the past two and a half years in my life. And it, a lot of it has come from conversations that I've had. And so the last time we had a, we had a talk on, on webcam, uh, you gave me the opportunity to kind of to take a deeper dive into why I wrote Walking the Path, The Leader's Journey, and it came out of my subconscious um, not long after my second suicide attempt. And so this is back in 2021, so a couple of years ago, but it was very impactful for me to kind of reconnect with life. And so to do that, I had to reconnect with people. Um, and, and along that journey, you became one of those people. So I really appreciate our relationship and our friendship um, and the fact that you've kind of helped me uh, really experience life again. And so I was hoping we could kind of take a deeper dive into, into what that experience was like for me, if that's okay with you. Yes, absolutely, Keith. And you mentioned that talking to people was a big part of, of feeling better. So how did these talks begin and what made you focus on overcoming tough times? Uh, so I would say everything kind of transitioned in my life, like many people's uh, from COVID and the quarantine. And so we're really pushing back 2020, 2021. And so this is a couple of years back. And so that time in human history was like none other, probably even if we were to compare it to any world war or whatever, um, it was just a different psychological experience for us globally because we were quarantined. We were kind of stuck in our homes and there was very little way of communicating or connecting with people socially as we were uh, so accustomed to. And so for me, the only way for me to connect was with my students because even the college experience, the college classroom experience was, yeah. you know, placed virtually. Um, but that wasn't really enough because having... Uh, a professor student relationship is is very professional and so there's um it's not really a time for me to kind of connect with people personally and the only thing i really had was my linkedin connection and so unfortunately uh my linkedin <laughs> connection list was rather uh small comparatively to others and so maybe about 2000 so over you know 10 years i've only you know got to connect it with 2000 people and even those people i really didn't know other by you know you know, right. a picture and a, and, a, and a profile. So it was really imperative for me to kind of reconnect really to like tap on people's virtual door and say, Hey, would you like to have a conversation? And people were saying, yeah, it wasn't really, they were jumping on it, but the people that I was connecting with really wanted to have a conversation and they were going through transitions, uh, even I would say worse than mine, because some of them had really lost a great deal. Now, there's going to become a time in my in my story, in my journey, uh, where, uh, you know, I've had to overcome a lot of difficulties, but these people had lost loved ones, money, homes, whatever. And sometimes it was the fact that they had lost so much that they were forced to make some real changes in their life. And a lot of times those changes were to make alignment with themselves and with their values. And so they really felt lost. And even though I did too, um, it wasn't really for me at the time uh, to kind of tell my story. I was still kind of wanting to reconnect and just in order to do that, just listening to other people tell their stories. And so that's kind of how it started. And how did these talks change over time and why they were so crucial for you initially? Um, so initially they were, um, just getting to know one another. So I took every opportunity to connect and say hi. And we're talking, you know, now that we've got this, this zoom space, uh, we're talking all over the world. And so I've reached out to people from as far away. And so I live here in Virginia in the United States. Yeah. And so all the way <laughs> to Australia, I've yet to talk to somebody in Japan, but I've, I reached out to Australia um alaska at this point and even as far away as hawaii so um the journey has been rather significant but it was really an issue of you know hearing people talk about their their tragedies and not just the heart-wrenching gut you know gut punch conversations that said yeah we all had to suck it up in some way these people were 
making specific changes. And so they took a really deep look in the mirror and said, I need to be different. I need to do something different. I need to think differently um, in order to feel, I guess the word we're looking for is to feel whole again, to feel like a, a human being again, because they were just so stripped of everything that they thought they were supposed to, were supposed to be, all that was gone. Um, and so one by one, you know, I had these conversations. And so I started a podcast called Level Up. And so we're talking many, uh, many when was ago. it exactly? But, um, when when, I, when was this? So it's easily two years ago. And so at the time of this recording, it's December of 2023. So easily uh, 2021. I'd have to mm -hmm. go back to my YouTube channel for a specific uh, publication date. Um, you know, so these were kind of, you know, scripted. This was, I was trying to get into the podcast, but really wanting to have the conversation. So I'd, you know, pre-screen pre and pre-call and we'd kind of go over some questions. But over time, it was really, you know, let's let's get to learn about one another. It just happens that it's recorded, like this conversation is yeah. recorded, but it was really about, let's, let's get to learn about each other. And so I, I quite literally threw the script out and said, you know, let's be present in the conversation. This is your story. Let's figure out what that story is all about. And so at this point, you know, two years in, uh, I went from, you know, level up to the question guy. And that's me. So if yeah. you ever to, uh, to Google the question guy, you'll get me. Uh, and then the podcast is called the question guy podcast. And so uh, the transformation, the stories are just incredible. And so people have gone through, I would say, hell and back. They've been through a lot. Um, and some of their journeys are, 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 like I said before, just gut wrenching and heartbreaking in terms of, you know, losing spouses or, you know, just struggling day in and day out to take care of family and, you know, paying bills. And so all of those conversations were just so inspiring. I think, I think anybody who were to listen would just their life would be transformed out of any of the stories. You could just jump in anywhere in the four seasons that I've recorded right. and just appreciate that conversation. But for me, um, it was, uh, I was absorbing all of that inspiration, I would say. I was absorbing all of the motivation and all of the things because what I've learned the most, um, I think, out of all those conversations is that. Well, two things. Uh, gratitude is, is talked about a lot. And so instead of always being, uh, well, I don't have this and I, I want to get somewhere else, it's like mm -hmm. being grateful for yeah. where you are. And then the other uh, aspect of all these conversations is to show up every day, you know, just sh you know, it's going to be tough. Today's going to be tough. It may be not as tough as yesterday uh, and maybe tougher than the day coming, but show up. And so show up and do what you got to do. Make that next call, make that, have that next conversation. Uh, and what I've learned is that you never know where a conversation is going to take you. And that's kind of my motto because sometimes it could take you on, on uh, uh, you don't know, uh, basically, because one conversation will be so inspiring that that person will connect me with somebody else and say, you really got to have a conversation with this person. Um, and then now it's like, I'm getting people to say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to refer you, this person needs to have a conversation with you. And so you meaning me, uh, I, and that's happening more and more. It's like now people are just telling other people to have a conversations with me. Uh, because they're they are so inspiring they are so authentic um so I, I don't see that what i'm doing is having like a podcast but really getting to know people for who they are and could you share a story or something that important you learned from someone during during this time mm. uh, a transformational story they're all of them are so it would be difficult to pick just one um, okay but one what's your favorite one? uh <laughs> close to your heart whatever <sighs> Um, so I, I it, I'm challenged to say, you know, cause I don't want to say anybody who's listening and have been on the question guy podcast. Oh, Dr. Keith, you didn't pick me. Um, so I can't like pick anybody in particular, but there are some stories I could say that, especially the most recent ones, uh, the most recent ones, especially in season four. So I've, I've recorded 
So for me, a com a series, a season is 40 episodes. And I've yeah. heard I've heard that's obscene. And so anyway, every 40 episodes, I go into a new season. Uh, and so season four, I've already recorded 20, you know, 20 conversations. And these conversations have really been tear jerking, meaning that people have lost loved ones in different ways. And so, yeah. Um, so recently, you know, we're talking about spouses dying of you know, heart attacks or you know suicide or um you know disease or whatever and so they're leaving their spouses um in states of flux and trauma and turmoil and so these and then and most of them are, are are women who have been faced with you know the loss of their husband and so that being the case they really had to learn how to pick their lives you know reframe it you know yeah. repurpose it and that's always a challenge because you've lost somebody who you've invested you know love energy time in and now they've got to do it all on their own and so those have been uh you know the most i think powerful conversation so far is because even through death even through death of a loved one these people are finding a way to to live again and yeah. find purpose in life. And what kind of lessons did you learn? Did you find in these stories? How did they help you heal? I think the process of having the conversation with people is, I'm still learning um, the the spiritual or the the subconscious or the conscious of the consciousness of all that. But I tell you what, the having a you know and i i now make it intentional i, I every mm. week i have a, a new conversation with somebody yeah. even if it's somebody i've never met before uh because it's it's the story it's the human connection it's the knowing that uh you're out there and life isn't perfect for any of us um and it doesn't have to mean that we're sharing the same struggles the same traumas but we are we are all impacted physically, physiologically, spiritually, to whatever degree that mm -hmm. is, mentally, socially, so all and emotionally. And so all of those things, people have found different ways, not just to cope, you know, not just to get by, yeah. but to actually heal and to have peace. I think is the right word I'm looking for. Have peace with their past so that they can have peace with their future. And so when they go into tomorrow, knowing that, and I'm doing and breathing intentionally because I've been taught to breathe. Uh, so they could go in and breathe deep breath and face the day with a, a newness and gratitude and, and peace. I, th I think that's good. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for having this conversation with me, Keith. I appreciate no, I, that. No, I mean, I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much.